Welcome to another episode of Nightbeat Media's Living the Dream. I'm your host, Gregory Tucker. Our honored guest today is Juan Kinley, an entrepreneur who wants to help us better understand the virtual and the real-time physical opportunities available in today's economy. Don't go anywhere. Yeah, Nightbeat Media, we in here. Uh, we live in the dream, live in the dream, turning my dream to reality. Young entrepreneurs determine their own salaries. Yeah, they try to hold us back, but I'ma let you know. We ain't waiting for a welcome in, we kick in the dough. Yeah, live the dream, you know we live in the dream. Ain't no limits to our vision, night beat, that's the team. Hey, live the dream, you know we live in the dream. Ain't no limits to our vision, night beat, that's the team. Hold up. Well, thank you, Juan, for agreeing to speak with us on Living the Dream. Um, Let's start out with, let's hear your story. Well, I I started off um, losing my job first, and uh, I was kind of not fulfilled with... um, you know the work that I was doing. I was I was making a decent amount of money. You know I was living. Uh, I could pay all my bills, but I always felt that I could do a little bit more. You know, so I started a. Uh, at first, I started a e-commerce business, and then I went to a renovation business right after that. Okay, now with your e-commerce. Uh, because on living the dream, what we hear a lot and what we really are excited about, and that is knowing the journey from the beginning towards the end. And that is a part of your journey in the e-commerce. What were some of the uh, obstacles that you faced and how did you overcome those? Uh, I I would say the biggest obstacle is this, uh, um, the timing of when money was coming in. So I got to a point at first, I, uh, you know, I started off on a basic level. Uh, I wasn't making enough to live off of at first. And then I built that up and until I was making almost double of what that I made, uh, working a nine to five job. So the, the problem with that is uh, the the payments when I received them they were coming in at odd odd t- times or sometimes they would get delayed and I would have problems um, you know paying my bills and, and, and things like that because I, d- I didn't build up enough capital to to um, you know li- live off of and run my business at the same time. Okay, so the uh, consistency of having that uh, that steady cash flow coming in. Right. Now, was there at any point, because you had mentioned that, okay, thank you, Juan. Um, As I was mentioning before, I had asked you, what was some of the fears that you had when it came to committing to doing this entrepreneurial thing full time versus having that, uh, say, somewhat nine to five secure uh, position of working for somebody else. Uh, Not saying that if you have a nine to five, that is a security. It's something that's secure, but um, at least someone else is making those decisions and so forth. This time you're committing far as to uh, take and all those risks yourself. Tell us about that. Yeah, I mean, it it's pretty tough as far as, um, you know, failure. Um, everybody's afraid of failure in, in most cases in relationships and and in business. So I, I would say that was the biggest, uh, biggest thing, like, you know, maybe, you know, everything would be going good one week and then, Maybe two weeks later, things might be going bad and you have to fix a problem. So how I try to always look at at things is I always try to deal with one thing at a time. So I'll I'll deal deal with it as I get to it, but I'll plan for, you know, maybe a mishap here or there 
to happen. I'll have a backup plan for it. Okay. Now, when you started on your entrepreneurial, on your business journey, um, was there any other obstacles uh, such as, well, uh, financing your business? Because um, even when you're doing e-commerce, a lot of times uh, some of our viewers may not know that there's a certain amount of investing that you have to do, and that's in the form of uh, either capital or in time. Um, could you share that with us? Yeah, it's just going out and pretty much seeing value where where other people don't see value. So you go out and uh, basically what I, I was doing at first was um, retail arbitrage. And what retail arbitrage basically is, is where you go out and you buy something of value and then you resell it for a higher value. So everybody's heard of, uh, you know, buy low, sell high. So pretty much that's that's the same thing that I, I was doing. Okay. And with the selling part of it, um, because sometimes when people think of, okay, in any business, nothing happens until you sell something. And that's regardless of, of uh, mostly everything far as in the world. Something has to be sold. It's a trade-off. Now, at the same time, far as selling is something that um, is something that you have to, people are not born with selling skills. That's something that you have to develop. Tell us about your selling and marketing as far as your your brand or your services and products. Well, I started um, selling products. I would find products that were um, already selling, basically, and that were high value at first, and then that turned into, you know, a lower value. So, um, as you know, people would use them, but still the 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 item, the products were still the same. So, they're still very good products. And basically, what I was doing is I'm I'm giving people an opportunity to to buy that same equipment or product for a cheaper price than they would buy it from anywhere else. So say the product is like a thousand bucks, I would find it for a lower price and then I would sell it for like $800 or something like that. Does that answer your question? <laughs> uh, yes, it does. But as far as selling, though, um, be, oh, as because far as you, selling? yeah, because you were uh, you you were um, acquiring the uh, products, and now you're uh, getting uh, you you're uh, you know distributing those products. But at the same time, as far as how are you going about selling them? Because sometimes people may think that. Um, you just get something and post something like, if I can use, for example, uh, Facebook, they have the marketplace where sometimes people get something, they'll take a picture of it and just throw it up there and say, okay, somebody's going to look and buy it. Now, in the, um, say, prior uh, uh, internet or e-commerce uh, market uh, or phase that at one point you had to uh, make contact as far as with the customer and at the same time uh, you had to close on that. So uh, creating uh, as far as what, uh, uh, discovering if they have a need for it and coming up with a solution for them and encouraging them to take action right now. Well, basically what I did was this um, work multiple platforms. So I would use like OfferUp, LetGo, uh, you know, Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, uh, Amazon, eBay. So that's that's six different platforms. And uh, I would basically just uh, pretty much just work the uh, product dis- description, take good, good pictures and um, – make sure the customer knows exactly what they're getting because it is a used product. So, Okay. 
And what That's about amazing. what about uh, customers? You know, for just, did you make it easy for them to go ahead and take action, like to purchase it, or or how did you manage keeping all of those platforms together? Because I know social media, uh, you, we hear a lot of that, but. Uh, sometimes as you dwell or say look under the hood there's a lot of moving parts uh things that you have to consistently maintain uh what were some of your challenges since you had so many platforms uh the most challenges uh really it was this uh you know keeping up with um you know the products that i would have i, I had over uh, 60 products so that's a lot of different products to to look at and uh with some of the products would be experimental some of the products i sold previously so i kind of know about you know how fast they would sell so it's just pretty much a trial and error type of thing kind of kind of like doing um you know music or or any other art form <laughs> so that's kind of how i figured it out just by trial and error okay so now we're going to transition far as into your um, home improvement or your restoration okay. business uh, far as from a cyberspace virtual business now to a somewhat brick and mortar service where you actually are in the physical world and uh, doing physical things as far as providing that service and those products. Uh, tell us about that. Was there uh, uh, what type of heart transition? Because those are two different hats there. Yeah, they're two different, really, really on the other sides of the spectrum as far as uh, you have to work more with people, uh, more, you know, talking with people, uh, you know, seeing what people want try to uh accommodate their needs um i i did several 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 different things as far as uh renovation stuff i do flooring do painting some electrical work um you know that's a lot of different things so what i'm finding out now from a business standpoint is better to be more specific um just you know be more specific do one one thing really good and uh people will, will come to you for it. Oh, okay. Instead of having like a variety of different things, man, a, a, a jack of all trades and not mastering one, you're saying Correct. just find that niche and then perfect that niche right there. Correct. Okay. Right. Now, uh, the next thing is mentoring. Um, was there um, any type of mentors when you went into the uh, restoration, the home um, restoration business, along with uh, also the e-commerce business? Were you able to find mentors or what type of training did you pursue or pick up that helped you? Well, ba basically, I'm like, I always view myself as a sponge. So I always look at all the people around me and try to learn from all of them. So, uh, you know, you were one of my mentors, of course, uh, as far as uh, the preparation as aspect, how to uh, properly prepare for, you know, whatever engagement that I'm going to be entering. Uh, you know, you, you've met Ben. He's, he, he's taught me... Um, you know, a few things with the renovation stuff as far as uh, repairs. Uh, there's Dexter McGee. He's a, a master electrician. Um, he's a very, very uh, good businessman, uh, carries himself very well. So I, I kind of learned a lot from, you know, a lot of different sources and, and, and try to, you know, work that. As far as the e-commerce, there was a couple guys that would come and buy stuff from me to resell on other platforms. And uh, I kind of re-engineered the things that they were doing, and then I would add it to, to what I was doing. So it helped me figure out things a little bit faster than if I just kept experimenting just by itself. Okay. 
Now, what are uh, some of the things that you felt uh, or do you feel at this point is helping you as far as uh, scale up your business? Uh, pretty much the upscale of my business right now is um, the marketing aspect, um, di- learning different um, ways to market, uh, you know, the brick and mortar business, the e-commerce business. They're obviously different, but marketing is pretty much the same. So if it if it don't spread, it's dead, uh, is what they say on the Internet. So, uh, so I've been learning how to do that. I, I bought a, uh, a program on, um, different marketing techniques. That's pretty, pretty cutting edge. And, uh, I've been learning that for a couple months now. Uh, when I finish that, I'll have a certificate, a certificate. And, uh, I'll, I'll also, uh, be setting up a, uh, marketing agency after that. So, so it's, uh, it's definitely something that's very important for, you know, just having a business, but you could use that just by itself to be its own business as well, just with the knowledge that you obtain with that. Okay. And one of the things I have to interject this, and that is since I've known you for <laughs> several, several years, that you've as you had mentioned earlier, that you're a sponge. And that is that you are constantly learning, evolving, Um, because I've learned so much from you, um, from a a lot of the material that you read and you shared with me, hey, have you heard, uh, uh, have you read this right here? And when I go and I follow up on it, it's like, wow, you know, it, it does add more. Uh, information um, as far as to uh, what you're doing or uh, that knowledge bank. It expands your knowledge bank. That is beneficial. Um, One of the other things that I would like to uh, ask you, and that is from your personal opinion, how do you value networking? Oh, Networking is... uh it's essential for you to succeed. Uh, they say you network your way to the top. Um, I mean, there's a lot of people in, in Dayton, I think roughly about 200,000 people in Dayton and, uh, all of them have different traits. Some of them are really strong. Some, some of your strengths might be somebody else's weaknesses. So you can always learn from somebody else, even if you, you know, if, if you don't think they're that intelligent, you can always learn from something, even even if it's what not to do. So as far as uh, networking, too, um, you can also, you know, gain um, a lot of success just by by knowing the right person or knowing the right steps to take. So I mentioned, uh, you know, you, uh, Dexter McGee. Uh, you know, just watching how you guys do things, um, you know, it it makes things go smoother, you know, because you guys, like you've been in broadcasting for 20 years. So you you do things in a way that, that flows when you're doing them. You may not know that, but that's how it works. So when somebody else sees that, they're like, you know, they might be amazed by that, but you've been doing it all your life. You know, it's just like riding a bike. So <laughs> I try to take those moments and just, uh, just learn from those. Yeah, th- thank you for that compliment right there. <laughs> so uh, tell us about future plans. And as far as for our, view, our listeners out there who are looking to find out more information about your services and some of your products, how can they contact you? Well, they can contact me through social media uh, and the internet. I have uh, causeandeffect.com. Um, uh, the services, same. same. Uh, the call to actions are on uh, social media. I have a uh, you know business Instagram. I have a business um, Facebook page. So all, all those 
ways are different avenues of uh, getting to me. My future plans, though, are uh, client acquisition through marketing. So um, I'll be using this on many different levels for myself and for other clients. So basically what I'm going to do with the information that I have is pretty much build a couple different teams and have them um, do specific jobs to get different aspects of the marketing done for different clientele that I, I go out and get and, and try to make, make things happen, I guess. (laughs) Sorry about that. Well, uh, no, that that's it right there. Um, You know, one of the things that I try and, and do, and that is every morning, I try to get a standard routine, and part of my routine is uh, listening to those positive affirmations. So uh, there's a thing that Tony Robbins says, and that is you win the morning, you win the day. And that's by listening to the various motivational uh, uh, speeches or affirmations that I can here. And that's one of the things that they constantly say. And that is, uh, what is it? Um, I think it was Benjamin Dorelli, Dizarelli. And he said something that, you know, if something's not happening, you got to go out here and make something happen. Um, yeah, and, and, having, and having the faith to make sure that it happens. Uh, I kind of learned that with you know, the e-commerce stuff, uh, with some of the stuff, it's like, do I really want to, you know, spend $80 on this item, but the return on that item could be, you know, like 500 bucks or something like that, you know? So it's like, you have to have that faith that that will, will, will manifest itself. Exactly. And the thing about it is that sometimes when people think about spending money, uh, they're thinking, okay, I'll invest in this. It's kind of like um, the old um, thing about weight equipment or exercise equipment. Sometimes people think that, okay, I'll see it back in the old days when they had those infomercials coming on, that I'll buy the glider and that'll help me, you know, shed like 50 or 80 pounds. The only thing that they forget about and when they purchase it is you have to use it. And that's the same thing for us with uh, uh, some of the information that, you know, you can purchase the coaching and you can purchase the software. But if you don't apply those steps, then you're not going to get the results that you know, you're looking for because it doesn't, um, it's like your car. It doesn't drive itself. Would you agree? Yeah, I totally agree with that. Uh, kind of a funny story, uh, you know, selling on, uh, Amazon, my first day on Amazon, I sold like 600 bucks or something like that. And, uh, it costs $35 to, Mm -hmm. to be a seller on Amazon. And, uh, I was telling my friend that and uh, they were like, well, what about the $35? Like, and I'm like the $35, what about the $600? You know, like (laughs) it's, it's kind of funny. Like, but I always, I always thought that that was a, a funny thing because they didn't have, they didn't see the end. You know, they didn't have faith in that or haven't experienced that faith to, uh, you know, to go through the process of, of selling an item online, basically. So, Oh, yeah. And, and that is so true that sometimes uh, we think that, wow, you know, why do I have to, why should I spend uh, that little bit right there versus, you know, thinking about not so much of what that little bit cost, um, then what's going to be the return as far as... Um, You know, once you actually put it to use, I was reading something uh, somewhere else. And uh, one of the things that they were saying is the difference between poor uh, people's mentality and far as rich people's mentality is that what 
poor people focus more so on is the money, um, the immediate money right there. And not saying that that's wrong because it depends on the circumstances right there. But they say what uh, richer or more affluent people focus on is time. So they'll spend the money in order to have more time because uh, money is something that you may be able to uh, get more of, acquire more of. But time is something that you won't be able to, you know, once it's gone, it's gone. So, um, right. Yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting there. Mm hmm. And it was pretty relevant to the story that you had just mentioned right there when someone was saying, well, hey, you're spending at $35 right there, not looking at, hey, you know, to get on there, that saved you a lot more time than, you know, because Amazon Trying has. To sell it yourself. Yeah. Exactly. They have a hundred, Amazon has a hundred million uh, customers. So, um, you know. Who wouldn't want an extra hundred million people to, you know, look at what you're trying to sell? You know, even if one percent of them sell your your product, you're going to be you're going to be in a, in a in a better space than with that thirty five bucks. And I would imagine that that took you a lot less time, also, as far as in oh. getting your products out there and and uh, right. you know turned over. Yeah, I kind of had a. Uh, a 10 X problem. <laughs> I was selling too much stuff at too fast. So I, I was, you know, at some points so I was spending $150, almost 200 bucks a day at the post office. So that adds up after, after a while. Okay. But by selling more stuff though, that uh, you were making more though. Also, I would imagine. Right. All right. right but the, the but the problem was that I didn't have I didn't build up enough capital at, at first to, to keep up if and when things got how they were. So I had to slow them down myself. So that that's what, OK. Uh, so that would be something that you would uh, share with other entrepreneurs out here that's listening that also look at getting a capital reserve in place just in the event of those lean times, right? Right. All right. Well, you know, as we're getting closer to the end of this, because I I know you have some other things that you have to take care of because your time is very important. And we do appreciate you taking this time and and sharing as far as your story, as far as with this. What are some of the things you would like to leave the listeners with? I would just like to leave the listeners a, um, you know, stay positive. That's one of the the hardest things to do in the in the world. Pretty much, uh, scientific study kind of proves that humans are a little bit more negative more often than they are positive. So, I would I would uh, push that message out there for anybody to uh, keep it moving and you know get paid. All right. Hey, Juan, I thank you again as far as for your time. And for our listeners out there, again, we'll post in our description as far as uh, information on how to get in contact with you. Uh, Just one more time, if you want to share with the uh, listeners as far as how they can get in contact with you, Juan. Uh, you can get a hold of me on uh, causeandeffect.com. Um, that has a number you can reach me at. Um, you can get a hold of me on Instagram. The same um, is cause and effect is uh, abbreviated C N E F F underscore renovations on on Instagram, and then on Facebook is. Uh, C-N-E-F-X renovation as well on Facebook. 
Okay, uh, Juan, I'm sorry about that, but uh, I had somebody kind of come into the control room right there and kind of <laughs> speak. We're getting ready to fire some people. <laughs> but if you could uh, repeat that again, please, as far as how can they get in contact with you? You can get a hold of me on uh, cause and effect underscore renovation on Instagram. Uh, which is uh, abbreviated C N E F X underscore renovation, and it's the same on um, Facebook. Or you could go to www.cnefx.com. Okay. Before I leave, th- since you mentioned that, there was one other question, and that is how has social media played a part in your business? Uh, social media plays its part basically, uh, you know, as another medium to connect with others, basically. So you have the power now to do things in the past that would cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. So it's a very, very good uh, connection tool as far as uh, how how you can connect with people and uh, how fast you can connect with people. So. Have you saw any pros or cons about it? Uh, the pros, uh, is I, I would say the connection and the speed. Um, the cons are the connection and the speed. <laughs> if you have anything bad out there or anything like that, it could it could uh, spiral out of control. Or if something's not true, you know, uh, stuff like that. But uh, I haven't encountered anything like that really. So, but just my uh, opinion on that. Mm-hmm. And if you're using it, how often should you, uh, what are some of the steps that you should be taking as far as as an entrepreneur? I would say as an entrepreneur to hire somebody to, to do it. So if you could learn how to do it yourself and then um, break it down and have you know, a team of people do it for you. So it frees up, frees up your time to get new business in. So that's how I would, I would recommend that. Again, we want to thank Juan Kinley far as for his time of sharing his story with us. As always, here at Nightbeat Media's Living the Dream, we want to hear your story. And... When you're writing the story of your life, make sure you're holding the pen. Until the next time. If you found this program inspirational as well as informative, please be sure to subscribe so you can stay updated as we continue to share stories of individuals who've turned their vision into reality. Also, be sure to check out our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook and Instagram. Give us feedback on Twitter or connect with me on LinkedIn. If you are interested in sharing your story, check out our website, nightbeatmedia.tv. That's one word, night, nightbeatmedia.tv. In closing, let me drop this. Only those who will risk going too far can possibly find out how far one can go. It's a quote by T.S. Eliot. Remember, we want to share your story. Live the dream, you know we live in the dream. Ain't no limits to our vision. Night beat, that's the team. 